Hello and welcome to the first episode of Telco to Techco. My name is Jillian Kaplan and I am head of telecom thought leadership at Dell Technologies. I am here with Young Kai Chua, who is a principal technology owner at Telstra. And we're today we're going to be talking about Telstra's Telco cloud transformation. So Young Kai, if you can introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, obviously, I can. So thanks a lot, Jillian, to uh, having me and giving me the opportunity to present on behalf of Telstra and obviously sharing you know, a lot of our cloud transformation journey where Telstra has been embarking for the you know, last few years. So personally, I currently work for Telstra. I've got about 15 years in the uh, telecommunication industry. So I've actually been through you know, quite a range and of roles, you know, including being a, a graduate in software engineering. I've done a lot of support engineer, integration engineer. I've been a network engineer. I've done delivery lead. I've been a solution architect. And I've actually also been a people manager at one point in time as well in my career. And all this has finally led to where I'm currently as the principal technology product owner in Telstra, managing a mission called uh, Telco Cloud. So Telco Cloud is uh, one of the mission that is responsible for providing a on-premise cloud platform that underpins Telstra's wireless network. So it's there to actually host critical workloads such as 4G and 5G networks, support and analytics function. And can you tell us a little bit about your telco cloud transformation? I know you touched on it, but can you tell us a little bit about your journey, right? You talked about a few years. Yeah, very happy to share that, Jillian. So as I've mentioned, Telstra has been on the network visualization business for about seven to eight years. I'm talking specifically about the wireless business. So Telstra as one, in, in terms of our approach, and you know, Telstra is obviously you know, one of the industry leaders where you know, we really pride ourselves with doing a lot of work first. And this is where we are always keen you know, to become one of the early adopters of emerging uh, technologies. But I think importantly, it's about trying to find the balance in terms of, you know, not dropping the ball on what we do best and how to best, you know, bring in, you know, latest tech into the business. And this is where, you know, we have actually started quite small with a very limited scope deployment of cloud to not just allow, you know, the people and engineering teams within Telstra to learn and adopt the cloud technology. But I think it's also important for us to actually start developing, you know, the new capabilities and operational framework. I think importantly, as part of this transformation, it actually allows us to actually start adopting a lot of so-called traditional IT kind of DevOps tools, you know, such as you know, Ansible, GitHubs, you know, Bamboo, CICT pipelines, and really start bringing in a lot of that, you know, automation capability into a more sort of, you know, traditional way of actually running the network. So we have got that kind of, you know, slow start. And then eventually, you know, we want to re got to a stage where we have actually got a very stable and sustainable design baseline. That's where we were able to, you know, rapidly scale and grow our solution to where we are now, which we're actually carrying a very significant of our mobile traffic on the Telco Cloud platform that, you know, my team and my mission is actually managing today. That's awesome. Yeah, and so it sounded like you started with test and learn to kind of see what worked before you did the full deployment. That's right. And did you have challenges along the way of that test and learn? Is there things you can share, lessons learned? No, nah, it has been absolute smooth fun. No, nah, just kidding. <laughs> I, I think... As with any technology, right? I mean, obviously, it brings about a lot of benefit, but challenges is, is absolutely a, a given. I think I might be able to probably just break down the challenges into like two different phases of category. I think, as I've already mentioned, you know, we do have that kind of early phase where we are trying to learn, ease into the technology. One of the biggest challenges we face at the time is really us having, you know, the confidence as technologists mm. to really troubleshoot, rectify issues and problems on the, the, the cloud the platform. The reason is just simply because cloud solution is really made up of many, many layers of systems that are vertically integrated with really, really complex uh, optimizations. And what I mean by this layer is really talking about the hardware, the firmware versions, the switches that's actually involved. 
the hypervisor software that sits on it. We've got OpenStack, we have got Orchestrator, we have got underlay networks, we have got overlay networks, you know, managed by SDN. And on top of that, we have then got our actual network function sitting on it. And the network function itself has got complex network integration, you know, with a wider a network, uh, uh, wireless core network where they're actually, you know, uh, participating in all the different transactions. I think when I say failure, um, for hard, hard failure, like, you know, hardware, something just stopped working completely, that's probably easier to detect. The challenging ones is really the gray failures or performance mm. issue that's actually being observed on the cloud. Say, for example, you've got the packet drop, you have got a congestion somewhere. How would you be able to systematically go through that entire complex stack and really get to pinpointing where the problem before you can even start formulating, say, a, a recovery procedure or recover uh, strategy for it? And I think for that reason, we have actually invested a lot in you know, monitoring capabilities of this solution in the very, very early days. And in particular, it's really in our data engineering and analytics capability. So this is where we want we ensure that we are getting as many metrics and logs out of each of the layer that I've actually mentioned. And I think importantly, we've actually done a lot of normalization of this data to make sure that you know the information we get from each layer can actually be correlated with each other. And I think that has actually in turn given us you know a lot of visibility and I think most importantly, allow us to actually create actionable insights, which will mm. then, you know, help us operate the cloud with confidence and more efficiently as well. That's great. And I think in the later stages, I think this is kind of where we have actually got trouble initially. But then as we kind of move on to a BAU mode where things are actually starting to work at scale, I think life cycle is really our biggest challenge and it still remain one of the biggest challenge we are navigating today. When I mean life cycle is really how do we go about upgrading a cloud? The unfortunate thing is that we never really got to the promised land of in-service upgrade with a combination of OpenStack and you know, critical network functions. Upgrades are still very disruptive to date mm -hmm. and is really moving. It was moving you know, forward at a very, very slow pace you know, when we start uh, running into these sort of problems. And we start experiencing different problems like, you know, we are falling behind our software currency and that in turn has got flowing impacts where we are not really getting to fixes, patches quickly enough. And, you know, we are starting to find to, you know, more security exposure and so forth. So, you know, we as a company, we've actually tried and tested uh, quite a number of different approach. But the most effective one to date is actually trying to think outside of the box and, and see how we can actually solve it not at the cloud level, but really taking a step back and see whether we can actually do it with a much more holistic approach where we try to you know, solution it by redesigning our network to try to tolerate you know, unavailability of our cloud sites for a pro prolonged period. Hmm. I think this has actually given us a lot more flexibility in terms of what we can actually do on the cloud. And at the same time, you know, we are not really impacting the performance of availability of services that we're actually providing to customer. So I think today, until today, this is really still, you know, one of our go-to strategy, but it is not sustainable. And this is where, you know, Telstra, we are actually uh, really looking forward and actually start investing in, you know, our next sort of, you know, transformation journey, which is hopefully we can actually get onto uh, cloud native infrastructure. And what, what I mean by that, you know, it's really container on bare metal. So it's really starting to pivot away from virtualization into containerization. And we are really looking forward to, you know, all those sort of uh, operational efficiency that I've actually just mentioned. That's awesome. And, and you touched a little bit on it, but, you know, some of your challenges have resulted in success, obviously. So what are the some, some of the biz biggest successes you've seen in your cloud transformation journey? I think in terms of uh, the success, I'll maybe put it in more of a way where it has, how it has actually brought about benefit, you know, to, to, <laughs> to Telstra, you know, as the telecommunication and the IT company. I would probably say speed is the first, you know, pro probably the biggest win we actually got to uh, get out of our cloud transformation journey. If we talk about network functions in the past, whenever we talk about network, it always come with a specialized network device. 
And then you have got all the various software that sits on it. Then, you know, you start, you really have to start addressing, you know, things from the ground up, from hardware to physical integration, rack and stack, power, before you can actually work on the actual piece of software, which is the, you know, the final bit that's actually delivering the value to the business. Now, network functions are effectively delivered as software on a cloud platform. Obviously, right. you'll be running on common compute platform on hopefully using common orchestration tool as well. This is where, you know, we are actually gaining a, a lot of economies at scale. What it means for us is that network engineers can now actually focus on what they do best, which is network integration and optimization and not worry too much about infrastructure lifecycle because that responsibility effectively can be you know, offloaded and inherited to a cloud group. Like the, you know, for example, like the mission I'm actually running today. And that what that means is that the amount of time that's actually required to onboard a new or expanded network functions is significantly reduced. And I think that has absolutely benefited the company in greatly reducing you know, our ability to you know, amount market new products, time to market, you know, has absolutely improved. It also allows us to actually react to, you know, a very dynamic and competitive uh, mobile market. Mm -hmm. And I think most importantly, it's also reacting to unforeseen sort of, you know, network events and impacts because we would then, we have the ability to quickly inject and introduce additional capacity on the fly into the network. And all these things, you know, hopefully it's actually going to help us provide a much better uh, customer experience, you know, with a high quality products as well. I think it's has absolutely got the added effect where we are not just running the network more efficiently, it's actually helping us build a more resilient network as well. So I'll say, you know, we've actually got a double win there. That's awesome. I got to be looking forward. So yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining me um, and we'll chat soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Julian. Bye-bye.